I hope you're all doing well and welcome back to my channel. Um, I feel like it's been absolutely ages since I've done a tutorial for YouTube and I've been meaning to do one for so long now. I've had a lot of different requests but I just thought as it's the run up to Christmas I'll do something Christmassy themed. So we're going to be drawing a little Robin Redbreast. Now I'm drawing on extra white hot pressed Fabriano Artistico paper. I'm going to be using a mixture of Faber Castell Polychromo colour pencils and Caran d'Ache Luminance colour pencils and um, the size that I'm working on is 8 by 10 so kind of just a little bit smaller than A4 size it's a nice nice enough size to get enough detail in without it being too big or too small also the reference photo the line drawing and the full materials list for part one is in the video description below so you should have everything that you need to start this tutorial so what I'm going to do first um, as you can see I've already drawn out the outline I'm just going to use like a regular rubber um, just to kind of make some of these initial outlines a little bit fainter. I think whenever you're drawing animals, particularly feathers that are very delicate, you don't really want any of those initial outlines showing through. So yeah, just going over them with a rubber to make them a lot fainter so we can't see them underneath our drawing. Like that. So whenever it comes to working with colour pencils on white paper, um, you always want to work from light to dark. So you want to pick out the palest colour that you can see in the reference photo, which is like a kind of a bright yellow. You want to use that as a base layer for the entirety of this orangey part, um, where all these orangey feathers are down the, the chest and on the face. But just for part one, I'm going to bring it down just to the bottom of the head. So I've picked out the Naples Okra Luminance Pencil, which is quite a vibrant yellow, but it's still quite pale. So it's going to provide us with that really nice sort of base colour. Um, you want to apply this with a light to medium pressure and sort of follow the same direction of the feathers whilst you're shading. Um, also, I find that Luminance Pencils are so, so good for base layers. I always try and use you know luminance pencils if I can as the base layer just because they're predominantly wax based so they're a much sort of softer pencil than the polychromos meaning that anything that you add on top just tends to blend really nicely um you know they're really kind of soft and sort of buttery so yeah everything just seems to blend a lot easier so I'm working that around the eye and up to that beak Once you've shaded um, sort of this far, you should have a flat side of your pencil and that's the side that you want to keep shading with because you'll get a much softer line and a bit more of an even coverage all over. We only really need like a really sharp, pinpoint sharp pencil more towards the end when we're adding in our details. But for now, we're just sort of blocking in that base colour. Look at that sort of uneven edge as well on the left. Um, some of these orangey feathers are kind of merging with like more of the grey sort of blue feathers on the left. So look at the shape and how far they kind of go out into that section. Yeah, so I'm probably just going to bring it down to about here for part one because um, we've got a lot going on anyway with the beak and the eye. It's quite a lot of detail, so don't want part one to be about 10 hours long before we've even got started. So I'll try and keep it as short as I can, but whenever I do tutorials like this, because it's so realistic and so in-depth, tends to be like an hour each part, but we'll see how we get on. Um, so that's the base layer for the orangey feathers. Now for the sort of grey feathers on the top of the head coming back down, there's kind of a blue tint to it as well as the beak as well. So I picked out the silver gray luminance pencil. This is one of them colors that's just absolutely perfect to use as a base layer for whether it's, you know, black fur, um, eye reflections, gray feathers like this, or just as like a base for the beak. It's kind of like an icy white, but it's got a really subtle tint of blue to it. 
Um, so yeah, kind of the perfect color really. So just like we did with those orangey feathers, you want to apply this the same way. So following along the same direction as these feathers and using like the flat side of your pencil once it's worn down a little bit and using like a light to medium pressure. And then also to this beak, I'm just going to apply a little bit as the sort of base colour. Sometimes when you've made your initial outlines a little bit fainter just by erasing them, um, it can be quite difficult to sort of see where you're actually applying that pigment, especially when it comes to specific shapes that you want to keep in proportion, like the beak. So just be really careful not to bring it out too far and keep sort of glancing at the reference photo as you're applying um, each layer. But yeah, something like that. And I think I'm also just going to add a tiny little bit around the eye. So we've got the eyeball that we can see got all those like highlighted reflections sort of in the middle of it at the top um, and then just around the eye we've got like another sort of section that's still quite dark but it's got a blue tint to it maybe that's like the eyelids who knows um, but yeah that's basically where I'm going to apply it so just around the eye and really just pay attention to the shape Even though this is, um, like we're drawing this eight by 10, obviously you might be drawing it different, but my drawing is eight by 10 inches. Um, but even with that, you know, you're drawing some things that are really, really small. So imagine drawing this on like a tiny scale, it'd be impossible. I'd definitely need some glasses for that, I think. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna leave that there with the silver gray. So now focusing back on this orangey fur, I'm going to go in with the light yellow glaze. Now this is a really, really vibrant colour, obviously, like you can see. Um, this is a polychromo pencil. Now these are predominantly oil based, so um, they're quite a lot harder than the luminance pencils and um, yeah, they're just really good for detail and also they've got such lovely vibrant colours that the luminance pencils don't really have. Luminance pencils are really good for like blending colours and sort of very neutral, earthy, like warm tones. Whereas the polychromos have more of a range and yeah, a lot of the colors are a lot more vibrant like this. So only the places that we can see that really vibrant yellowy color in the feathers is where I'm gonna apply this light yellow glaze. So sort of directly around the eye with the medium pressure. And again, you want to apply it um, in the same direction that those feathers are going in. Now this is going to sort of act as a bit of an undertone, so when we add layers on top it's going to keep them looking quite bright because we've added this colour underneath. You can use it with a lighter pressure in some areas just to help to brighten up that area without it being too overpowering. I'd probably say like the main vibrant part is around the eye, like just underneath here. But yeah, I'm gonna leave it like that, I think. So I'm just gonna leave those feathers there like that for a minute and focus back on the eye because it looks a bit strange at the minute just being one hollow circle. Um, so we've got the outline of it and we can see the eyeball in the reference photo and it's kind of got a little brown tint to it like where the iris is 
around the outside and then we've got that black pupil in the middle. So I'm going to use the Van Dyke Brown Polychromo to fill in the um, iris around that pupil. And you probably do want to make sure it's quite sharp when you're doing like really intricate little bits like the eye and the beak. Um, and then, yeah, obviously for that feather detail more towards the end. So I'm going to just outline roughly the pupil that's taking up quite a lot of the eyeball in the middle. And then you also want to um, kind of shade around all of these highlighted reflections as well, sort of break them down into shapes. And then just fill in that sort of brown area where the iris is. Sort of build up layer after layer until you've sort of squashed down the teeth of the paper and it's completely smooth in that area. Like that. It still looks very bizarre, but um, yeah, stick with me. So next up, I'm going to go in with the Payne's Grey, which is quite dark, but not as dark as the black. And it does have a slight blue tint to it. And I'm just going to apply this just above the eyeball where we've got quite a lot of shadow. So just above these like highlighted reflections. And then it kind of just drops off there as the sort of eyeball comes out. And then I'm gonna take that around the rest of the eye Whenever it comes to eyes or anything intricate, um, just literally break it down into as many tiny little shapes as you can do. Start off with like your basic shapes and then sort of differentiate your main colours and literally just break it down as much as you can to make it as sort of manageable and easy um, to draw as you can. So yeah, basically kind of working over that silver grey that we added earlier on around the eye and just bringing in those shadows sort of in and around that area. And then what I'm going to do is fill in where that pupil is in the middle with a medium pressure. And again, just like we did with the iris, sort of build up um, layer after layer until you've completely squashed down the tooth of the paper and it's completely smooth. And also remembering to shade around all these little highlighted reflections and shapes. I'm going to just briefly use the um, Raw Sienna Luminance Pencil, which is like a lovely orangey colour, which we're going to be using quite a lot for these feathers. But I'm just going to use it on like the bottom half of the eye, curving it round the iris, just to make that uh, brown colour look a little bit more vibrant where the light's hitting it. I'm going to go back in with that silver grey luminance pencil. Also, when you're working on something so intricate, you kind of flick between a lot of colours. So I hope that you're 
still with me <laughs> because I feel like I've just used about 100 colours in about one minute um, constantly switching between them but the top of this highlight in the eye I'm just going to go along there curve that round um, and also bring that in as well Maybe just add a little bit into the actual highlighted reflections as well. I always think there's a bit of blue in all sort of highlighted reflections that you draw when it's when it comes to eyes, um, especially if they're quite dark. That's one sort of top tip for making it look realistic. Always include a little bit of blue in there. Um, so now I'm going to go in with the black, making sure it's really quite sharp. I'm going to start by working into that pupil in the middle. And then take your time and be as sort of accurate and delicate as you can um, and working round the actual eyeball, just darkening the shadow. This is probably the most intricate part of the whole drawing, but at least we're starting with the hardest bit. And then once we've got that out of the way, then hopefully it'll be a lot easier. But yeah, it's always difficult working quite small scale. I honestly don't know how people can draw like so small on such a small scale. Um, I've seen some artists that literally draw such detailed drawings like the size of your fingernail, which is just insane to me, honestly. I'd need glasses, I'd need a, a magnifying glass just to see what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, I think I much prefer drawing large scale because you can get so much detail in there, but obviously it does take longer um but yeah i think eight by ten inch is a nice size just to do like a tutorial without it taking too much of your time so yeah just constantly tweaking little bits in the eye really um i might go back in with that silver gray again just to brighten more of the outside there. Also fill in more of those highlighted reflections. And then we've kind of got um, sort of little lines going from the eye to the outer edge if you can see what I'm doing here, just kind of joining those two lines up. And it's not all the way along, it's mainly just in this section here. And then with the black, just kind of separate some of these um, highlighted reflection shapes as much as you can. I know it is really small and quite sort of finicky to do but like I said this is probably the hardest part of the whole tutorial because it is so small and intricate. I'm going to briefly go in with the dark indigo which is a bit more of a, a blue tint um, compared with that Payne's grey. They are quite similar colours but the dark indigo is a bit more blue and I'm just going to apply this to like this bottom part of the, the highlights in the eyes or eye literally no more than that into the iris I'm just going to add a tiny little bit of the dark cadmium orange which again we're going to be using quite a lot to build up these orangey feathers but just for now just to um, sort of intensify some of those colours in the iris that are still looking quite dull just going to lightly go over that bottom sort of curve like that to really emphasize those brown colors and then you want to go back in with your black just to tweak any other areas and make sure that the shape is as accurate as you can get it
So what I'm going to do now is pull out those highlights that we can see in the eyes, really intensify that contrast to make it look like it's kind of shiny and glossy. Um, Cause at the minute it's still looking a little bit dull in some areas. So what I like to do is use the craft knife slice tool. I've used this in previous tutorials that I've put out on YouTube and I use this all the time in my tutorials that I upload to Patreon. Um, I can't recommend this enough. It's honestly so good for elevating that realistic element, creating some really fine details that's almost impossible to achieve just by using coloured pencils alone. So especially for this like intricate part of the eye, this is like the perfect, perfect tool to use. So what I'm going to do is use the um, pointy side. If you've never used this before as well, it's basically um, a ceramic blade on the end of just like a like a pen tool. You can hold it with like a pen or a pencil so you've got maximum control. And it's got a pointy side and a curved side and it's a ceramic blade. It's not sharp really, um, so you're not going to cut yourself, but it's perfect for kind of removing those top layers of pigment and getting really fine details and lines within your work. Perfect for highlighted reflections like this, perfect for whiskers, fur detail, feather detail. Um, yeah, I will leave the link for this in the video description below as well. So if you don't have one, then you can literally run and get one straight away. Um, yeah, honestly, incredible. I think I got mine maybe two years ago, maybe a bit less than that. But since I've got it, I've literally never not used it in a portrait. I use it in all my commissions, um, all my tutorials, like it's just the best tool to use ever. Um, so yeah, just basically focusing on where those highlights are in the eye, really pulling out all of those little details and it should increase that contrast significantly. I've also added a little bit of detail like in between these lines that we added just before sort of in between um, the eyeball and this outer sort of section. And then you've got all these little specks and bits of highlight that you just want to emphasize. does create quite a lot of like pencil dust if you will um so you just need to constantly sort of lightly dab it away or if you've got a clean brush just get rid of it so it doesn't smudge um and then i'm just going to go back in with the black just to sort of define those shapes and yeah we should be pretty much there with the eye now bring that little bit of a eyelid up a little bit just above the eye um, and then yeah and then the last technique that I'm just going to show you whenever it comes to highlighted reflections I always like to use the fine nib uniball Posca pen um, now I'm not going to be using absolutely loads of materials in this tutorial so this is the last one that I'm going to be showing you um, but honestly these two are incredible for highlighted reflections in eyes if you've got a brand new one of these it's going to be a lot more pigmented but basically it's like a paint pen so if i just do a little bit on my finger it's kind of like a wet medium i've had mine for years as you can tell it's all rubbed off um but yeah it's like a white paint pen and whilst it's still wet you can literally just dab it away if you add too much or you can wait for it to dry and use a pencil just to kind of work over it and it will literally just crumble away so you can't really go wrong with this um and it's again perfect for these highlights in the eyes you just want to sort of dot in where those specks are and i'd mainly just apply it to the brightest part of the highlight in the eye 
just to really get that glossy sort of reflection going on. But yeah, I think I'm pretty much happy with how that's looking now. So yeah, and we can always go back to it and, um, you know, alter little bits as we progress through the drawing. But for now, I'm going to leave that there. So whilst we're tackling all the hard bits first, I might as well go on to the beak next, which is, again, quite intricate, but hopefully not as difficult as the eye. Um, and again, you want to break it down into as many different shapes as you can, starting with the most basic. So I'm going to start by using the black and just go down the centre of the beak. So where like the top and bottom parts separate. And it slightly, like ever so slightly curves up a little bit. Like a very, very subtle sort of S shape. I mean, I've literally just drawn a straight line, but in the reference photo, you can see it a bit more clearly. It kind of curves round slightly as we approach the sort of tip of the beak. And it's pretty much all the same width all the way down like that. With the um, dark indigo that we used just before, I'm going to use this just underneath the beak and just go over that sort of outer initial outline and just focus on the shape sort of where it meets the rest of those feathers. I keep wanting to say fur because I'm so used to explaining fur that when I draw feathers it's different. Um, so yeah, if I end up saying fur instead of feathers then yeah, I mean feathers. <laughs> yeah, so underneath it's kind of a weird shape. It kind of splits off a little bit. And we've got those feathers in between. So I think I'm just going to fill that in lightly. And I'm not working right up to that centre line because there's like a little bit of a yellowy golden um, sort of section in between that, like right next to that on either side. So you want to shade and leave a little bit of a gap just around that initial or middle line. I'm applying a slightly harder pressure where that little nostril is. If they've got nostrils, that's kind of what it looks like. And then just bringing that to the tip of the beak. I'm trying to keep the top of the beak as light as I can. So I'm not going over that um, top outline with this colour because it's too dark. Like that. So then with the silver grey again, along that top line, you want to sort of smudge that pigment that we've got so far. You can see as well how incredibly well that blends as well as um luminance pencils being good for base layers they're also incredibly perfect for blending and just merging colors together as you can see here i'm going to bring that to the tip of the beak maybe a tiny little bit just underneath as well i'm going to go in with the naples okra which is what we used as a base layer for these orangey feathers I'm going to use this just underneath that middle um, line, bringing that golden yellowy tone around the middle part of the beak. I'm using a medium to hard pressure, kind of straight away. And I might also just add a tiny little bit of that light yellow glaze so the corner of the beak here is a little bit brighter and more vibrant as the light sort of captures it at that point like that and then going in with the dark sepia polychroma which is a really dark brown and um, focusing on the bottom part of the beak you just want to sort of build up some of that darker color
make sure the edge is really crisp and like sharp and defined. And just look at those like subtle areas of light and dark. And then focusing on the top half of the beak. Whenever you're drawing birds, it's all about, you know, patience and accuracy and delicacy as well, more than anything else. Um, you know, feathers and all these little tiny features are so intricate and um, delicate that you almost want to replicate that with your pencil strokes and every single like mark and colour that you add, you want to apply it in a really delicate sort of um, soft way, if that makes sense. And using the pointier side of my pencil, I'm just going to add a few of these tiny little marks that we can see throughout the beak. Just doing like little dots and tiny little squiggles to recreate the texture of the beak although it probably will be quite smooth to feel i imagine um but yeah up close it's got loads of these little squiggly textures to it on the surface i'm now going to use my favorite white pencil ever which is the white caran d'ache museum aquarelle pencil um it's so pigmented and it shows up really well over multiple layers. I'm just going to apply this to the top of the beak to create that sort of shine. You can also use it throughout the beak just to, you know, bring out some of those subtle highlights. I think whilst I've got it in my hand actually I'm just gonna show you something that you can do with this so because this is a museum aquarelle pencil it's actually like a watercolor pencil so it's activated by water and um, so if I just kind of dip it into a tiny little bit of water like literally just the tip I can actually go back in and that main highlight in the eye just dab that on there And it should just intensify and brighten that part. Like that. Then back to the beak, just to finish it off, you want to go back in with your black. Just define that middle section again.
and just go over any other um, sort of shadowy areas or little details that you want to add in. And then with your craft knife slice tool again, you want to repeat the same technique that we used for the eye. So literally just doing little um, dots to kind of remove some of that top pigment to reveal some of the highlighted detail and just kind of increase that contrast. Pull out all of those really intricate details as much as you can using the pointy side of the ceramic blade. You can create a much finer line with the pointy side. You'll find any artists who are like realism artists, they'll always use some sort of like etching tool like this, um, simply because of the accuracy and the tiny little details you can achieve. So yeah, I'm gonna leave that there for the beak and now focus on those orangey feathers. So after all of that detail, um, back with the orangey feathers, I'm gonna go in with the raw sienna luminance pencil and Basically, you want to sort of figure out the structure of the feathers, where all those light and dark areas are. And again, just follow along the same direction as those feathers all the way through. Whenever you're adding a new colour or a new layer, um, constantly be looking at the direction. Feathers can be quite a few different textures, I think. You can have really fluffy feathers if you've got like a chick. Um, you've got like you know, the tail and the wing, which is almost a completely different texture to these feathers that are very sort of fluffy and overlapping on the chest and the, the face. But I think the face feathers are a bit more compact and a lot shorter. So you want to replicate that with the pencil strokes that you're adding. So keep them very linear, very short, and just build them up gradually, again, in the same direction as the feathers. Focusing as well on the structure and where those darker areas are within the face. So I'm starting just underneath the beak. And just because an area is um, a little bit darker than others doesn't necessarily mean you need to apply a harder pressure. Just keep your pressure the same throughout, I'd say. Um, sort of medium, light to medium, what I'm doing now. Um, and if it is a little bit darker, just build that up by adding a couple more layers. But we're obviously going to increase the darkness of our colours and the vibrancy of our colours with each layer that we add. So, yeah, I think coloured pencils are just generally a very sort of timely process. It's very gradual. Um, but personally, I like it. I think it's very therapeutic using coloured pencils. Um, it's not very messy at all, which paints are. <laughs> Um, yeah, they've got a lot of pros to them, but like I say, they are quite time consuming. You do need to be patient, but once you sort of reach that stage where it really kind of comes to life, that's like the rewarding part because all of those hours that you've spent on it have really paid off. So it's currently the end of November, well, pretty much the end of November. We're in like the last um, week. So yeah, Christmas is fast approaching and I'm quite stressed out because I've got a lot of commissions still left to do. Um, I think I've got five left to do and a little bit. <laughs> I've kind of nearly finished one. Um, I've got five left to do, but the issue is one of them is huge. So that's gonna take up most of my time. The other ones are like medium sizes. Um, but yeah, I'm just kind of working on a little bit of each one every day, just trying to get as many hours on them as I can in between all of my uh, Patreon stuff, my tutorials and all of that. So yeah, but we'll get there. I'm trying to stay calm, but it is in the back of my mind that am I gonna get everything sent off in time? But I feel like every artist has that around Christmas. There's always a lot going on. It's a very busy time of year. I suppose it is for any like small business. You've got a lot going on. Um, so like all the packaging and emails and everything just takes up so much time. 
so yeah it'd be good if i could like clone myself like five times and do everything five times as quick but unfortunately i can't do that so it's just just me unfortunately so around the eye um it's kind of like in tears we've got loads of feathers that are very clumped together almost like layered up as it approach like in between the inner corner of the eye and the corner of the beak so you want to go along some of these initial outlines that you can still just about see or i can anyway just follow around that curve So these feathers at the top of the orangey bit of the head kind of flicking up into this like grey area um, where the other coloured feathers are. But yeah, like the main cluster is around the beak area in between the eye and the beak. So I'm just kind of reapplying this pigment um, in the areas that are quite a lot darker. So just concentrating in those areas, adding a few more layers to just really build up that colour a little bit more. The areas that are very like vibrant yellow, I've sort of left them as they are or gone over it with a very light pressure. So we can see a bit more structure now to those feathers and where those light and dark areas are. So it's just about building up a bit more colour um, and then we can go in with those details a little bit later on. So I'm going to go in next with the dark cadmium orange and really add those rich sort of orangey colours to the feathers using a medium pressure 
and obviously making it a little bit of a lighter pressure where we've got these yellowy parts of the feathers. I think the more sort of flicky out motions you do around the edges, the more fluffier those feathers look. It kind of adds to that texture. You want to work this colour around the eye. Going in with a slightly harder pressure where um, I want to really increase that saturation. So where those really orangey rich parts of the feathers are. You might need to go back in with your light yellow glaze, which we used um, earlier, just to add like a bit of an undertone like we have done around the eye, just to kind of bring some of those vibrant yellowy colours back up to the surface in the lightest parts of the feathers. This will really help to capture the light kind of as and when it's bouncing off different parts of the feathers. It's going to show the structure 
It's going to show which bits are kind of raised up slightly compared to others. Next up, I'm going to go in with the shade Sanguine. I think that's how you say it. Sanguine, Sanguini, who knows? Um, this is a lovely, like more of like a burnt orangey colour, but it's still quite vibrant. And I'm just going to focus on where those shadowy areas are just to build up more of the structure of those feathers. You should find at this point, um, you know, you're starting to squash down the tooth of the paper. When I refer to the tooth of the paper, I just mean like that grainy texture. See, so the camera's probably picking up this like linear structure to the paper. Um, this is basically where the pigment kind of sits in between. Um, so the kind of grainier your paper, the more layers you can add because it can kind of grip onto that pigment really well. So you can add multiple layers and the smoother that your paper is, the harder it'll be to do that, but the easier it'll be to blend. There's kind of pros and cons to, to different paper surfaces, but this Fabriano Artistico hot press paper is definitely my favorite. Um, but again, it also depends on like your drawing style and how naturally heavy or light handed you are when you're drawing. I think I'm naturally quite a heavy handed um, drawer, like that's my natural sort of drawing style. Um, but yeah, you kind of get used to different surfaces. I've tried so many different surfaces over the years. Um, I know the badger tutorial that we did a few months ago, that was on drafting film. That has absolutely no tooth to it whatsoever. It's completely smooth. So opposite of this paper, really. Um, but again, I absolutely love that because it's so good for detail as well. But how you work on these different surfaces sort of alters and changes with each surface that you work on. Um, but yeah, it's personal preference, really. I'd always recommend trying as many different surfaces, like paper surfaces, as you can. Um, until you find one that you kind of click with and what feels natural to draw on. Um, that's my main advice really. But for coloured pencils, I'd definitely recommend trying drafting film. Um, any hot pressed papers are really good, like watercolour papers are really good. Um, but yeah. So again, just focusing around this little cluster of feathers, like around the beak. Just building that up a little bit more. The texture of the feathers here is very tiered, layered, kind of going in different directions. And the ends of those feathers, like the individual feathers, are kind of frayed. Um, they're kind of split apart, really. So we can see like the individual little bits that make up that feather. So yeah, just keep to the very like short linear motions with your pencil. And that should help to build up the texture that way. At this point as well, you can also start bringing in some of that detail. So making some of those darker lines stand out amongst like the main body of feathers.
briefly I'm just going to use the shade green gold which is a very like dark gold color so again you want to use this around like the main um, highlighted areas and just build up some of the detail in those specific areas so anywhere that looks quite yellowy and golden just start kind of building up more of that detail From now on as well, with every colour that we add on top of this, you want to go in with a really pinpoint sharp pencil so we can be as like detailed and accurate and intricate as we can. And then I'm also just going to use the shade Terracotta, which I use all the time for like gingery fur. Um, it's great for like golden Labradors and those kind of animals, like red squirrels. Um, quite a vibrant colour. That, so that's just kind of tinted everything a little bit more orangey and then at this point after building up all of that gorgeous color and tonal value you want to really focus on those darker details and increasing that contrast so I'm going to go in first with the burnt sienna polychroma which is like a rusty burnt orangey color and really focus on those darkest areas within the feathers so those shadowy areas like underneath the beak um, and all of these like cluster of feathers in between the eye and the beak as well along with the bottom of this section that we're drawing for part one so like the bottom of the head where it meets the body I don't know how long I've been recording for, but it feels like quite a while. So apologies if this is over an hour. But like I said at the start, when you're doing something that's so in depth and I'm like explaining every single step of the process as well, it does take quite a bit of time. Um, and you know, everything that we're doing is so intricate that you want to be, you know, you do want to spend time sort of perfecting those details. But yeah, I'm really enjoying this one so far. I think because I draw quite a lot of cats and dogs and horses for like pet portraits, doing um, birds for like tutorials sort of in between that, it's quite a nice change from drawing fur because the texture is kind of completely different and how you approach it is, all, is almost completely different as well. Very sort of linear, short pencil strokes, very straight lines. 
whereas fur varies so much. You've got like curly fur, wavy fur, the colours are also different. Um, you know, short, silky fur, long, straggly fur, like you've literally got endless textures to draw. Um, but feathers are a nice change and they allow for like such intricacy and precision, which is, yeah, quite a nice contrast to drawing fur all the time. I think with fur you can afford to be a little bit looser. Whereas feathers are very tight with the detail. I'm drawing a, a robin, but it doesn't really feel like Christmas at the minute because it's sunny outside, which for the UK is a miracle in itself, to be honest. But um, yeah, I'm going to the Christmas markets this weekend. Well, tomorrow, actually. So hopefully then I'll feel a bit more Christmassy. Um, and also it's not December yet, so maybe that's why. When we've got like the Christmas tree up and everything, then yeah, I'll feel a bit more like Christmas. But yeah, I'm going to be working on this little guy over the next few weeks on the run up to Christmas. So if you want him to do like a bit of a Christmassy drawing when you've got some spare time, um, then yeah, this is a good tutorial to follow along with. So yeah, if you've stayed with me so far, then thank you so much for watching. I kind of always like to do a mixture of like my artist vlogs and um, tutorials as well. I always like to do free ones on YouTube because obviously my main teaching channel is Patreon um, where I do like so many different tutorials on there every month but yeah I always like to do a few here and there for YouTube as well as like a bit of a, a thank you for watching my videos because yeah it's always uh, great seeing all your comments and stuff and I do really enjoy YouTube like making my artist vlogs in particular I feel like such a vlogger <laughs> like but yeah it's kind of good to see the comments and a lot of you seem to like watching the behind the scenes stuff um, which is what I try and show as much as possible so yeah and I guess it's good to have a bit of a variety between like my artist vlogs and um, like process videos time lapses and also tutorials So that's really sort of brought that texture to life. We can really see it, like, we can really feel that texture now, if you will. So we just want to build on that a little bit more. We're using a slightly harder pressure just to focus on those darkest lines and I'm just kind of pulling those out in certain areas. I'm just adding a few extra lines to like the ends or the edges um, of like the orangey feathers. So it merges nicely with the like gray bluey feathers that are at the top of the head and making the way down the body. So I'm going to leave that there, I think, with the burnt sienna. Lastly, I'm going to work into um, these darker details with the Van Dyke brown which is slightly darker. I think we use this for the iris um, in the eye.
I'm just going to add a few little wispy little hairs or parts of the feathers just coming out of the side of the face here. You want some overlapping and you also want them slightly different lengths. I think that's really added to that fluffy texture of the feathers, which is quite nice. So just to finish off these orange feathers, I'm going to go in with the craft knife slice tool and pull out all those little intricate highlights. So again, just like we've been doing with our pencils, short linear motions are following the same direction as those feathers. I think doing some little highlighted or lighter lines like this over a shadowy area creates um, the sense that, you know, some of those feathers are overlapping and some are kind of on top and behind each other. Just gives it a greater sense of depth. So that's it for our orangey feathers. So I'm now going to focus on these other feathers that are a slightly different colour um, going along the top of the head and back down. So I've picked out the olive brown 50% luminance pencil. Now this is like a kind of a khaki kind of colour. Um, perfect for these like yellowy, like very subtle greeny colours amongst the feathers. So I'm going to start there. Obviously we've already added our um, silver grey base layer. So we've got that sort of pale blue colour to start with anyway. Keeping my pressure quite light with this one. just turn my big light on because it's all of a sudden got really dark in here I feel like it's going dark so early now like literally three o'clock and it's dark um but yeah next up I'm going to go in with the light cobalt blue luminance pencil which is very similar to that silver grey if I just compare the two but it's slightly more blue so working into those like grey bluey areas I'm going to apply this light cobalt blue quite lightly And the lovely thing is that um, orange and blue as colours make themselves stand out against each other. Um, 
so yeah this should really kind of pop off the page now once we've built up this color a little bit more i'm going to go in now with the sepia 10 percent this is actually like a lovely lilac-y colour, like a grey neutral lilac-y colour. So literally perfect for um, the colour that we're trying to achieve. Kind of one of them colours that's really hard to differentiate. Um, it's kind of made up of loads of different colours but in a very subtle way. It's still very neutral. Um, so yeah, this is the perfect colour just to kind of bring everything together really those like khaki colours and the blue sort of undertones. So that's just dulled down all of those feathers. Um, also be careful when you sort of shading right up to the edge of the um, orange feathers. We kind of want both colours to merge because they're bo both kind of in the same, you know, body of feathers. They're not two separate things. But at the same time, you don't want to sort of blend them together. You just want to sort of do short lines that sort of overlap, kind of go into each other. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to leave that there with the sepia 10%, focusing on where we just added that khaki colour before, so that olive brown 50% I think it was. Um, I'm going to go in now with the raw umber 50%. This is slightly darker, it's a very similar colour but just slightly darker. And I'm going to focus on the same areas and this time use a medium pressure. So hopefully you can see how it's all kind of gradually coming together bit by bit. Making sure your pencil's quite sharp, I'm going to go back in with the Payne's Grey and this is where you can start to add in your darker details into this section of the feathers. So we've got quite a dark bit round here which is in line with the eye, that's probably the darkest part of this section. Again, doing very repetitive, short, linear motions with my pencil. 
to build up that feather texture. So all that's left for us to do now is to pull out all those extra little bits of details and highlights using the craft knife slice tool again. So back in with the craft knife slice tool, probably using the pointy side again to get that really fine line. Or just kind of flick between the two, see what works best. I think maybe the curved side actually shows up a little bit better. Um, but yeah, just pull out some of those highlights and details all the way through this section of the feathers. You might want to flick from the edges of the orange feathers like up into and over um, some of these grey feathers just to show like the direction and how it's kind of going up and over the head. So these orange feathers are slightly in front. 
or kind of on top of the uh, some of the grey feathers. I wonder how many times I've said feathers in this tutorial. Probably about a billion. So yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with the details there. Um, I think just to finish off, I want to make uh, this little car key sort of gold bit a little bit more golden. So I'm going to go in with the green gold that I used earlier briefly, if I can find it, this one, um, another polychromo colour. I'm just going to very, very lightly go over that area just to give it a bit more like of an intense colour because at the minute it's looking quite neutral in comparison with the reference photo. So just very lightly add a little bit over those areas, kind of work that into the feathers. There's like a few little hints of it as we make our way down the feathers here as well. So just add a few little sections there. And maybe also just a tiny, tiny little bit of the raw sienna. Just to make that a tiny bit more orangey. And then I think we're pretty much done. Like that. So I hope you've enjoyed part one of this Robin tutorial. Like I said, I will be uploading like a new part every week um, on the run up to Christmas. So this has been part one and probably the most complicated part, like I said, just because of the eye and the beak, there's a lot of really tight, intricate details going on. Those feathers on the wing are a completely different texture and the feathers down the chest kind of get a little bit bigger. So they should be a little bit easier to do than those feathers on the face. Um, but we will be repeating the same sort of techniques and using similar colours. As I said at the start, I've left the line drawing, the full materials list and the reference photo in the video description below. So you should have everything that you need um, ready to start this tutorial and follow along all the way through. So yeah, comment below any questions that you've got and what you thought of this tutorial. Um, and I can't wait to see all of your progress pictures. Please tag me on socials. Um, at Becca Baron Art and yeah I'm excited to see all your work so thanks for watching and I'll be back very very shortly with part two where we'll be progressing down the body with those orangey feathers um, and just making a little bit more progress so yeah thanks for watching please remember to like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel to see more